You know, we, we talk about the tools for value-based care, and I, I think we, you know, in my mind, the push really started back with the ACA in 2010. Um, and you kind of touched on this, Charles. Do you think there's going to have to be another push harder into value-based care? Because I think it was a nudge. I don't know that the uptick, I think we've prepared to, to do it, to, to really embrace it. And I think you can look at some statistics to say that it's much more prevalent than it was. But in my world, and I do a lot in this area, it's still a fee-for-service model generally. So do you think there needs to be another legislative or regulatory push to really push the industry into it? Or do you think it's going to happen on its own? No, I think there's going to be additional, additional nudges needed. Um, CMMI was created as part of the ACA and has been really brilliant at innovating Medicare away from fee-for-service towards more. This is an agency within the, within the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, Medicaid Services that was set up specifically to uh, for innovation, you know, innovate these types of yeah. all types of innovation, but particularly these p new payment models. Yeah, th thank yeah. you. And I, I think they're going to need to do more. And I think fiscal pressures are going to force that. There's a tremendous amount of inertia in the industry that needs to be overcome. There, the the government is investing heavily, probably over investing from a dollar standpoint because. It, it hasn't really been conclusively proven that much of the Medicare share savings programs that's driving a lot of the value-based initiatives is actually saving money. Some programs like the REACH program, um, in our analysis, is costing more money, but is priming the pump towards value-based. Um, I, I think that's a risky strategy because it's costly and isn't yet showing tangible evidence. So I think the government needs to be even more creative and work harder in partnership with the private sector and not so much in the ivory tower of, of uh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., sure. to, to move faster towards value-based care. Michael mentioned we're spending about $3 trillion, I think it's closer to $4 trillion a year in health care. The world spends $16 trillion. One out of every $4 in the world spent on health care is spent right here in the United States. So we don't have the outcomes to show for it. So we see tremendous opportunity to create uh, better care at a, to, to deliver better care at a lower cost. And I think this country is going to be under tremendous pressure to do that because the ACA did not do it. Obamacare expanded coverage, but increased the cost of sure. care. And this is our looming fiscal problems are going to force these kinds of changes. And value-based care, I, I think, is right at the heart of it. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Charles. I mean, I, I think I still fundamentally, fundamentally believe that people and companies are economic animals. And so if you turn off the spigot and stop paying people to do things the way they're doing, they will change their behavior. The problem with um, you know CMS is it's been slow, and as it should be, right? I mean, they should be taking data, they should be testing programs as they've done effectively, see what works, see what doesn't, but that doesn't take a year. That might take 10. And so we're in that you know five, seven, 10 year evolution of figuring out what programs work. You have a few administration changes in the middle, and it, interestingly, it's been fairly consistent across administration over the last you know couple, I'd say. Uh, but that takes time. But if you have a uh, health system in New York and they're shutting down left and right, if you, if you actually see and if you live in New York City, who's a fee-for-service provider, they will focus on ancillary, you know, pr ancillary services, so surgeries, cardiac, hips, knees, things that make money on a, in a fee-for-service environment, unless you capitate that and stop the, uh, you know, the total payment or have it come down based off an outcome, they're not going to change, right? They're going to stop mobile health clinics. They're going to stop mental health provision. They're going to be focused on what makes money. And that's not surprising, right? That's, that's economic behavior, and that's rational. So I think government, private sector needs to somewhat come, come together and do that. And they are, but it takes a very long time. Yeah, maybe take it one step further. I mean, CMS, we've talked a lot about, you know, in terms of lack of innovation. But even on the payer side, the commercial payers are not set up for value-based care. And to analyze the outcomes that a lot of the providers are. So we've invested a lot in our businesses, and it's very frustrating to see the payer environment not respond quickly enough. And so I think everyone's view is, although value-based care sounds great, you know, it's, it's a zero-sum game. Some people will benefit, some people will not. But even in this iteration, given how slow the innovation's been, um, there's probably going to be, you know, another change uh, before we end up in, in, you know, that new world. Um, so hopefully, you know, CMS obviously invests in it, but also, you know, the private sector payers as well, the commercial payers. Mm -hmm. One quick comment, I think, going, tying it back to AI, ML, and technology is, I think there's a lot of very similar parallels in what we're talking about with technology, right? 
people are saying, oh, AI is going to fundamentally change healthcare. It will, right? But I, I have the view of, and I think it's said often, you overestimate uh, how much technology will change in one year, but underestimate it in 10 years. In 10 years, AI will be embedded in everything in healthcare. And if it's not, a technology and services provider will not exist. The next year or two, it's a lot of testing, right? It's just clinical notes. Give me a solid use case that has a specific clinical and financial ROI in 12 months. There aren't many, right? And so that's where we are. But I think there's a lot of parallels because there's so much capital and money spent. So people think about it, it's going to be transformative. It will, but it's not going to be next year.